we're going to learn how to use Google Fonts. Now, Google Fonts allows us to choose from over 800 different font styles that we can use in our websites. All right, they have a massive library. So let's go ahead and get started and learn how we can use these different fonts. So what I want you to do is go ahead and open up your browser. All right, let me make this full screen. And we are going to head over to developers.google.com forward slash fonts. All right, and here is where we're going to get started. So I want you to go over here and click on guides. And then in here, it gives us a quick example of how we can use this. But what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to come right down to here to the overview. All right, so we can get started with Google Fonts API in just two steps. So first, all we have to do is link Google's font API into our HTML page and then we're going to add the font name or we can actually add this into our CSS file. All right. So let me show you how to do this. Come down here uh, where it says for a list of fonts you can uh, use see Google fonts. And in here we are going to see that we can use over 800 different font styles. Now don't spend too much time uh, going and trying to find a font here. What I want you to do is find three fonts that you like. All right, don't go crazy. So I'm going to choose this Macondo. And when I hit the plus sign, you'll see that it shows up here from uh, one family font selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose this Spyrex. And I'm going to scroll down here. And let's use, uh, I'm going to use this Open Sans Condensed. All right. Now, when we're working with different font styles in our website, you don't want to like choose like 10 different styles. OK, websites, uh, the font should be simplistic. It should be easy to read and you shouldn't go overboard uh, with it. It can get your website looking really, really busy and distracting if you're using too many different types of font styles. All right. So now that we have chosen three fonts, uh, come down here and click on this and this is going to give us an overview how we can implement these fonts into our website. So coming down here we can use the standard way and we can link it into our HTML and this is auto generating the uh, base URL that we need and then including the font families that we have chosen. All right. The second way we can do this is we can actually import the URL directly into our CSS file. And in this example, we're just going to use the standard method. And if you scroll down here, it shows you how you specify this in your CSS, how we're going to use the property font family. And then we're literally just using the name that we've added uh, into the link here. So go ahead and copy the link. Come over to brackets. And what we're going to do is this link needs to be inserted into the head of our HTML page. So right underneath the title, we're going to slap this right above our own style sheet. So press enter and go ahead and paste that. And then you can see that we've got the base URL. OK, and then we're selecting the family and then we've got three different font families in here. All right. And you can see that each font family is separated by a pipe and then font families that have uh, more than one word in it. It's uh, being concatenated with a plus sign. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into our CSS and use this. I'm going to go ahead and do a vertical split. Uh, move this over and pull my uh, CSS into this window over here. Now, in our HTML body, we already put a font family in here. We're using Times New Roman, which obviously doesn't exist uh, in our page right now. And then we have two fallback font families of serif and sans serif. All right, so in this HTML, go ahead and just get rid of it. We're not going to be using it. And then down here, I want you to delete the header two. And I am going to go against the drive principle, which is don't repeat yourself. And I am going to repeat myself uh, in this example. Go ahead and get rid of the other header tags in this group. Uh, get rid of the font style in here and we're going to change the line height to 2. 
Now I want you to take this uh, class here and paste it two times. And we're going to change this to our header two and our header three. And we're just, we're just doing this so we can add a different font family to each of these headers so we can see the difference between them. All right, so in our header one, go ahead and press enter, and then we're going to type in font family. And then let's select the first font family. All right, so I'm going to copy the Macondo, and I'm going to put it in uh, single quotes, and then go ahead and close that off. All right, and then in our header two, go ahead and copy the second one, which we have in Open Sans Condensed. And notice how this has a colon 300. Um, what we can do in this, in your link here, is you can actually add a few other uh, style of properties to your font family. So in this case, what it's doing is it's adding a font weight of 300. If we wanted to italicize a font family, we can simply do an I. If we wanted to bold it, we can hit a B. Uh, or we can do a font weight. And then if we wanted to do a bold italicize, simply do a BI. All right. And in this case, we're just going to leave it to the font weight of 300. Go ahead and copy this. And in our header two, we're going to type in font family. And single quotes, we're going to paste in our font family there, close it off. And let's grab the last one, Aspirix. And we're going to add that to our header three. Cool. So now we've got those different font families added. Go ahead and be sure to save both sides, the HTML and the CSS. And let's launch this and see what it looks like. All right, very cool. So we've got three different font families working here. And everything's looking very nice. Come back over to brackets. And remember, it's always a good practice to have a fallback font. Not all browsers may be able to read these font families. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click uh, on this header one. I'm going to click uh, right after the font family. I'm going to hold command, click after this one on the header two and on the header three. And we're going to add a comma and then write in serif, comma, and then we'll do the sans serif. All right. So those are two fallback font families that we can do. So that is Google Fonts. That's how we can implement them into our project, add some spice to our website, and don't go crazy with fonts. All right, that's it. That's a wrap. Let's move on.